What's up everyone and welcome back to another video. I figured since I'm making an entire investment series for you guys, it's only right that I let you in on the top five mistakes that I've made as a beginner investor. Because I know exactly what it's like to finally build that courage to start investing only to get out there and lose money. It's no fun. It'll have you over in a corner somewhere rethinking your whole life. The mistakes I'm about to go over actually had me second guessing my decision to invest in the first place because I thought I was doing the right thing in most of these cases and I still lost money. So today I'm going to be very clear on how not to invest and if you listen carefully, my mistakes will help you make more money. Quick disclaimer, this video will make a thousand times more sense if you've already watched my video that I posted last week about investing for beginners. Also, I'm not a financial advisor. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money, make more money, and better yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms and most importantly, build wealth. Let's get into this video. My first ever mistake as a beginner investor was buying stocks at the wrong price, all because I misunderstood a simple phrase. Now before I started investing, I didn't do a ton of research, at least not on a consistent basis. But one thing I remembered hearing over and over again about stocks was to buy low and sell high. So I bought at a low. That's the right thing to do, right? Wrong. See, what I didn't realize was there's different types of highs and lows within the stock market. And I also didn't realize there's actually a way you can see if stocks are overvalued, which is basically another way of saying overpriced. So in my case, I bought PayPal when it was at a low, but it was still overpriced. And if me saying that confuses you, don't worry, I got you, I'll explain it. To keep this as simple as possible, there's two levels to focus on. One is called the resistance level and the other is called the support level. So if you look at this image I put on the screen for you, the line at the bottom is a support line and the line at the top is a resistance line. So what that's telling you is the support line is when a particular stock reaches a low price level over the course of time. And the resistance shows you where a stock reaches a high price level over time. And it's super important not to overlook those lines. So I'll say that to say this, on stock trading platforms such as Robinhood or Webull, as you scroll through the available stocks on the platform, you'll see small charts next to whichever stocks you're looking at. Next to that, you'll also see a price as well, and they'll either be red or green. On these platforms, green means the price is going up and red means the price is going down. I know that sounds super obvious, but you can actually go in on the settings and swap the colors if you want to. And that's why I felt the need to specify that. Anyway, when I got into PayPal, I saw that it was red, which meant it was down. So I went ahead and bought it at that low. The problem with that was I bought PayPal above the resistance line. You know, the higher line. So just to paint a picture for you, I bought PayPal when it was around $272, but it kept fluctuating between that price and $310. So I noticed it kept capping out around the 300 mark. So I was like, well, I'm not going to put any more money in because it obviously keeps dropping once it reaches its high. So I at least did that part right. You know what I messed up on though? Once it dropped back down to 275, I went and bought some more because I was like, hey, I'm making a profit. You know what I'm saying? I felt good about it. So I bought a decent amount of PayPal at that point. Again, I was buying above the resistance line. Here's why that's a bad thing. Once the stock price goes above the resistance line, we typically see higher highs and higher lows than normal. So let's say for the sake of this PayPal example, the resistance line starts at $260 and up. And let's say the highest price that we've ever seen is 310. That means the range of this resistance line for PayPal is between $260 and $310. You following me? Good. So now let's say the stock market just opened up for today and at the beginning of the day, it was $292, but by the late afternoon, it dropped to $270. That means on the trading platform that you're using, once you take a quick glimpse of that stock, it's gonna look like PayPal is down. And technically it is because it just hit a low. And because it's down, it's gonna show you on the platform that that stock is red. The mistake I made was seeing the red as if it meant that was a good price to get into PayPal, simply because it was red. So I went ahead and bought it. Instead of doing that, I should have done more research in this case because as fate would have it, just a few short months later, I watched that stock drop from 270 all the way to 240. By this time I already had like 12 shares of PayPal, so I was down $30 per share. Do the math. The second part of this mistake was the fact that I didn't take the time to properly evaluate the stock and see how much it was truly worth. 
I went over this in my investing for beginners video, but a very quick, easy, non-math related way to see if you're getting into a stock at a good price is simply by looking up the 200 day moving average of that stock and then simply aiming for that price or lower. There's other ways to get an even more accurate judgment of when to get into a stock, when it's at a fair price, and understanding exactly how much a certain stock is worth. But I'm saving that for Patreon. Content is coming next month. If you're interested, I have the link in the description. So I'm gonna add another layer to this PayPal stuff just so you can see how real this is before I move on to my next topic. After the stock dropped to $240, I then watched it drop to $212 had me looking sick and i don't care what anybody has to say it is very hard to stomach that type of drop without getting your emotions involved that's how you make a grown man cry but wait there's more then it dropped from 212 dollars to 196 and now it's down to 189 at the time of this recording that's about depressing. If I'd have just followed the 200 day moving average rule, I would have known that it would have been best to get into PayPal at around $200 or less at that time. But instead, I got in at $70 more than that, all because I was in such a rush to own PayPal shares. And that led to me watching my PayPal shares plummet to their untimely death. Like, now my PayPal stock is down like 21% and I can't believe I'm saying this on camera. I'm being a little dramatic there, but that actually brings me to my next two points. When stocks fall in price, people freak out. And that's whether it falls 10% and stays like that for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, or if it falls 20% or more, people freak out. Instead of understanding why a stock is falling, instead of understanding the massive opportunity they have whenever stocks do fall in price. And you know what? I'm definitely guilty of this, so let's talk about how I messed up in the stock market yet again. This time I made two mistakes in one. It's actually pretty impressive how perfectly it ties in with this video. But anyway, I'm very bullish on cryptocurrency. And for those of you who don't know, bullish just means that you expect the prices to go up in the future. So with that said, one of the most popular apps for cryptocurrency is Coinbase. And when Coinbase first IPO'd in the stock market, I just went ahead and bought it. No hesitation, no nothing. As soon as it IPO'd, I bought it. I even told my friends to buy it. I didn't do a speck of research. I just went ahead and bought it, expecting it to skyrocket immediately. It did not. And looking back, it's kind of sad because I really knew nothing about this company at all, besides the fact that it's one of the most popular apps that allows you to trade crypto. There was no reviewing the earning reports. There was no comparing the competitive advantage it had towards its competitors that are also in the crypto space. It was just me having a wild hair and like, you know what? That's the stock I want to invest in. That was my first mistake. And then as soon as I bought it, a few days later it dropped like 10% and it stayed there for a few weeks. And I got frustrated, I got upset and I just went ahead and sold it. I was like, screw it, I don't want this anymore. That was my second mistake, selling the stock way too quickly. Because of course, just a few short months later, the stock price went way past where I bought it at. Which means if I would have just held on to it, I would have made some money. And I couldn't even get mad, I was just looking at that stock like, Had to take one for the team, low key. Now, as you probably remember a few minutes ago, I said my PayPal stock also dropped, but it dropped pretty drastically compared to Coinbase. So if you're wondering what I did when my PayPal started to drop in comparison to the Coinbase one, I'll tell you what I did. I did the right thing. Instead of selling my PayPal stocks, I just waited and I watched. I looked at the patterns and I researched when a good price was to actually get in because I knew it was a great business, so I didn't want to give it up. And as it took one drastic drop after another, I just kept looking and then I did what is called averaging down. So once it dropped from 270 to 240, I went ahead and bought in at 230. And then it dropped again and anything below 230, I, I just bought a bunch of them, like five and six at a time. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do as a company starts going down a lot like that and you know for a fact this is a great company based off of your research and what you know about it, you just keep buying more and more and more. Because the way I saw it was, cool, now I get a great company for a crazy discount. And because I did all of that buying, it brought my cost average down from 272 average to a $245 average. That means when the stock price is over $245, I'm gonna be making profit. So let's say it goes back up to, not even the all time high, but let's say it goes back up to $270. That's $30 of profit per share at 20 shares of PayPal. I would not be upset about that. 
and again, it's because I have a lot of faith in PayPal and I know exactly where they're going to go. I know that the stock price is going to go above that $270. I know it's going to go above that $310. And I know they have a lot going on with themselves. I know they have a deal with Amazon. I know they're involved with cryptocurrency. They own Venmo and everybody I know that uses it really, really likes it. Plus, PayPal is the number one online payment platform in the U.S. Come on now. PayPal ain't going nowhere. So remember earlier when I said that once a stock price goes above the resistance point, we tend to see higher highs and higher lows? Well, the opposite applies to the support line. Just to completely bring that point home, I want you to know that PayPal has definitely hit its support line and then it's went further down. So now we're seeing lower lows and lower highs. That's why if PayPal went up to $215 per share today, it would show as green on your trading platform. Even though just a few months ago, it was showing up as red when it was over $270. And that's because even though it was at a low, it was still above the resistance line. Hopefully that makes sense. If it does, leave me a comment down below because I try to make this as clear and concise and easy to understand as possible. Beginner investor mistake number four, investing in too many companies. This may not seem like a mistake at first, but I promise you it is. You're always going to be told to diversify your investments, but there is a such thing as over diversification to the point where you actually miss out on getting larger returns. And it's for this simple fact. I had 20 something companies I was invested in and I had like five really strong ones. Then I had like eight or nine of them doing decent, giving me like between two and 8% returns while others were just dragging my portfolio down like negative 4%, negative 10%. So my entire portfolio averaged out to about 6% for a total return per year, which isn't horrible except for the fact that I knew I could do so much better than that. And I knew that because my top companies like Apple and Visa and Microsoft and companies like that, they were doing good numbers. They were hitting like 12 to 40%. So seeing that type of return from the top dogs in my portfolio, and the reason I call them top dogs is because they're at the absolute top of their industry, then turn around, then turn around seeing 1%, 4%, negative 5% from other companies that weren't anywhere near as big, advanced, or competitive, that made me realize I needed to cut some of these from my portfolio so I could see larger return. All I can say is my portfolios have been beating the market consistently ever since I made that change. I'm just saying. Plus, I went over some of this in my last video on investing for beginners, but if you're going to have 20 plus companies in your portfolio, you're much better off just getting into a really good ETF such as VOO or VTI because they have hundreds of companies inside of them at a much more affordable price where the companies are very strategically allocated and they give much better returns. Enough said. If none of that made sense to you, go ahead and check out my investing for beginners video. But first, here's my fifth mistake and this is more of a general tip for you. I really wanna share it with you because I think a lot of people forget about this and don't worry, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing complicated about this. You have to be patient. You've gotta be patient when your favorite stock starts to fall. You've got to be patient with yourself as you continue to learn about the stock market because there is a learning curve. And you have to understand that stock prices will fall. Even if you follow the 200 day moving average, they can still drop far below that. And you can still lose money. And that's the risk you accept when you decide to invest in the stock market. But you following the advice in this video of how not to invest will definitely reduce those risks. Here's another thing about patience. As you improve and you mature and you become more and more seasoned with investing, certain things that freak most people out are going to actually start to excite you. Like if you're like me, you might get excited when a stock price drops 20% because you see it as a very valuable opportunity to get in at a very good price, much lower than its fair price value. And then you know in let's say maybe six to eight months, it'll skyrocket well past that because you're gonna know that some of those stocks that are dropping are actually really, really, really valuable opportunities where you can buy a fantastic company for a big discount. And you're gonna know once that stock goes back up to you know its previous all-time high and then beyond that, you know you're gonna be up thousands of dollars. And trust me, it 100% happens. Like when PayPal goes back up to its all-time high, I'm gonna be up thousands of dollars. But the reason I'm telling you this is because it's very easy to get hasty and then spend money that you don't have just because you know that stocks are on a discount. You still gotta wait till your money's right to go ahead and invest in these things. Be patient, 
Wait until you have the money to buy the stocks and don't give in to the fear of missing out. This is all about psychology. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.